Hello and welcome. My name is Daniel Enskert. I run the global consulting business for Strategic Insight. I'm here today with Musi Kidan uh, yeah. from Pictay. And uh, it's an curious thing because uh, Musi is in Geneva, but we're in Hong Kong today. Yeah. So we're here at the yeah. Asia Fund Forum. And we're going to touch for the next couple of minutes on some of the main trends in fund selection, fund selection and manager methodology, what you have seen. I guess. Since this is not only important for Asia, but also for Europe and the world, a couple of basic things. How long have you been the, the head of the fund selection unit for Pictet? Uh, I, I'm heading the head of the fund selection team for the last four years, maybe, uh, four and a half years. And I have been in this business for about ten years uh, now. How big is the team? The team is uh, quite ex small, given the global weight of the bank. We are six people. A team of six people, four analysts, and we have two percent, uh, two people on the uh, support side. Okay, and that's that includes the qualitative, quantitative. So you, as a team, do do everything for the bank for the wealth management side. Exactly. Yeah, we we pr mainly cater to the wealth management division of the of the bank. So, and that means. Picte as an asset manager is part of that, but is sort of a client just like anyone else in theory. Exactly, he's a, well a, pri a provider of Correct. that service, uh, among others. But of course, a privileged one because yeah, uh, we know them, and that's an advantage. Of course. <laughs> now, um, a couple of things that that uh, uh, probably would be interesting in your current select list. How many managers? How many products are we talking roughly? Uh, uh, we have a very concise list of uh, managers. Uh, we chosen the path that, given the size of the team that we have, we better select a few funds that we use extensively in our clients' portfolio and over which we have the depth that we want to have. So it's about 47 funds. And uh, the most interesting thing about it is simply it's coming from maybe 40 or 40 managers. Right? Managers. So we just cherry picking products. Correct. And that, that was always very curious to me because most fund providers are not like that. They have strategic partners and they yeah. work with those five or six firms. Now you have 42, 45 managers and 47 mm -hmm. products. Yeah. So, uh, but at the same time, you mentioned you have. You look for them, you try to find them, and in a way they are a partner because you stick with them for a long period of time. Exactly. exactly. The way we approach fund selection is in a, in a strategy form, meaning that if we have selected a manager for some reasons, uh, hopefully for the right reasons, and to the extent that they continue to provide the expect or, or to deliver on the expectations that we set for them, we are happy to hold them for the next Ten years. Now let's get let's get a couple numbers around that. So on average, you invest what about 80, 100 million per fund, or how? Well, what's, what's the range? Yeah, the range is simply if you divide the amount of as, uh, assets that are invested in the 47 funds, which is give you, uh, yeah, it's about four, five billion and a half. So you you have that number, maybe 60 million yeah. per fund, uh, but. And the actual sense is that we have funds or that we have a tremendous amount of money with. Yeah. Half a billion. Yeah. And others it's maybe half billion. It's and on five the million. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay. And uh, uh, also how that product fits in with the asset allocation decision. But because basically we select funds in order to use them. So the asset allocation decisions drive the selection process that we do. So uh, when we select products it's because we need them for the asset allocation decisions. And we now, what's interesting also when you look at Pictay, you have been let's let's move to the asset management side for a bit okay. for a little for a second. You've actually been successful in different areas. There was a water fund, you know. There's yeah. alternative management that you've done. Mm. There's local uh, currency emerging market debt. Mm. Um, do you, when you look at your fund selection, uh, what have been the changes since 2008? So, if you look post crisis, because what we have seen globally is on the one hand you had firms from a fund selection standpoint mm. become headquarter centric mm -hmm. and every the decision went to your team so to say mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. and in other firms it actually has gone to the the sales uh, and advisors mm -hmm. the teams on the ground and mm -hmm. they have taken more initiative to do their own asset allocation. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, that has been a mix in different regions of the world differently. Mm -hmm. how, how has Pictay tackled that since uh, the crisis? Well, I, I would say we have the other way around, Ma meaning that before the crisis maybe, uh, there was a latitude left to the uh, client relationship managers to look out what would be most suited product for their clients, yeah. meaning that they were incentivized, well, they were uh, 
uh, advised to use the fund selection that we, we have, yeah. but they were not forced to. Right. But then the crisis came and uh, it was paramount for the, the partners at some point just to say, well, you know what, there is a team dedicated to selecting fund managers and you are the client relationship manager. It's not your job to find out those products. So uh, you, can, you can continue to use them, uh, other funds if you want, but it's, you have to be responsible for what you did. For what you did. And suddenly people realize that that's not their business and their uh, their forte. So uh, uh, we saw suddenly, you know, many people getting interested into the products more so after the crisis than before. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's touch a little bit base before we go broader mm -hmm. on where within your fund selection uh, mm -hmm. or within the product range, where where's the biggest turnover? Like, how many of your forty-five funds have been there for a year, two years, three years? Mm -hmm. In other, in other words, how many opportunities are there if you're not on a list today to yeah. get on the list? Yeah, that's always the discussion that we have with the uh, fund managers coming with the, new, with the product and we tell them, okay, well, your product may be good, we're happy with the one that we have. And if there's an, uh, an opportunity to rise, we'll look at it. But then, to give you what I said, there has been a, a, a higher turnover after the crisis, uh -huh. meaning that we entered this uh, crisis maybe with uh, <laughs> Uh, funds that have certain criteria, and, uh, and most of them tended to be the same. Uh, uh, t to be precise, we had mostly in our list uh, stock pickers, bottom ups stock pickers, and suddenly when the crisis came, they went the same problems, most of them, yeah. even if they were, you know, uh, in different regions, different asset classes. So, what we tried to do after the crisis was simply, as I said this morning, just to think about the, the, the fund that we select in, in terms of uh, uh, yeah, toolbox. So basically to have all sorts of things. And the asset allocation de decision drives which products to use in what circumstances. Yeah. So to, in that sense, we had higher turnover just to restructure the funds that we have. But usually the funds on average are there for three years minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do have in the second, uh, the oldest fund in the in uh, the selection list today is, has been there for the last 12 years. Which and one? county. Can you tell us which one it is? No, I don't you want can. to. <laughs> that's too bad. But what we can figure out, <laughs> let's, let's, move in the, let's move a little bit in the other direction. Uh, um, what has happened since the crisis when you look at globally fund selection? Yeah. Investment performance clearly is key and, and demonstrating that performance over time is key. Yeah. Now that is challenging and you mentioned, you know, you talked about and it's not unusual that a good manager might go through rough patches as well. Yeah. So the other three things that I have encountered or we have encountered in our research uh, around the world since 2008, we talked to 1,200 different mm -hmm. fund selectors mm -hmm. that the brand, yeah. The organizational stability mm -hmm. and how to prove that, mm -hmm. uh, and the service component, along with performance, is sort of where the mix is determined of whether it's mm -hmm. the right manager and the mm -hmm. right product. Mm -hmm. Beyond the metrics of selecting based on performance, what are the crucial things that you look at? Mm -hmm. You know, do you look at brand? Do you look at service? What stands out mm -hmm. here? Yeah, you, you're right. It's uh, what we what we have seen is simply over the years, uh, managers do very good very well when they are in an environment that is conducted you know uh, uh, so basically the organizational structure that they work in the environment is crucial so basically we usually tend to avoid those fan managers that or institutions that have high turnover in staff mm -hmm. because as I said before, we, we spend a lot of time understanding managers, what they do, to get to know them. And the worst thing that we happen to us is simply to get the right manager and six months later to see him right. of the company. So uh, we have to start all over again. So uh, so basically, yeah, you're right. It's, it's important, the institution that they work in. Not the brand name. I wouldn't say the brand name per se is, is important, but uh, the institutional stability. And for instance, uh, we, we like when um, the owner operator type of sleep. Yeah. Uh, and that gets me to a good point, or, or, or one, one of the last two things that, that, that I wanted to touch on. Mm -hmm. Sort of the, the big names, mm -hmm. the Goliath firms of the industry, the Black Rocks, mm -hmm. etc. And, mm -hmm. and then on the other end, maybe you call it the Davids, yeah. you know, the boutique mm -hmm. names that are sort of different. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have, of course, the what you could call a multi-boutique, yeah. a multi-David, where yeah. you have a larger global structure around it, stable, mm -hmm. but you have these boutique individually structure. owned boutiques. Yeah. What do you like best? Or is, is there areas of, the, of selection and, and, and investment where you go for one mm -hmm. versus the other? If I look at the, f the, 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 the selection list that we have today, it have all of them, 
but at, at the margin, I, I, I think um, the clients came to, to us, not that because we are the best selectors, but also to find something that they don't have elsewhere. Right. So uh, there is, I would say, an implicit push into, you know, the, the smaller it's names. Putting. And uh, it, it's also a story to tell, sure. you know. Uh, uh, saying that this is an entrepreneur that's doing the right thing to do this, and especially given in peak tech, it's, 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 it's maybe more important than elsewhere because you have a partnership that has been running for 200 years. So it's for the sort of client that we have, this is something that is important that we have to, to, to take into account. So uh, quality-wise, if they were uh, everything equal. We would go for you know the, the partnerships that structure smaller boutique doing you know focusing on a single thing.